Hey, it's Vicky Air Hunter here to talk today about one of the most important aspects, in my opinion, with device and device information for the purpose of CrossFit and high intensity interval training. And that is the training load tracking. So a lot of different watches have different approaches to it. And the Garmin system and family and the Polar family have two of the top, in my opinion, the, the best tracking metrics when it comes to watching your training over a long period of time, trying to evaluate if it is getting better or worse than your current fitness level and helping you to know if you are pushing yourself or not pushing yourself as hard as you possibly could. So we're gonna look at those two platforms and show you how the data is displayed, what I feel like, and we'll so look at the hands-on of what the apps look like, and then we'll come back together and talk about what I feel from the information after testing both platforms pro for a prolonged period of time and how it may benefit you. Nothing in here is specifically uh, subjective, it's all sort of objective, it's all sort of opinion of what I have found to be useful and the most important aspects in my tracking of different aspects of training. So please take it for what it's worth, but the most important thing that a lot of reviewers miss is, it miss is that a lot of the sports watches in some of the lineups, specifically in the Garmin, like half of their watch lineup does not include load tracking. It doesn't include exertion tracking for the individual workouts, and it doesn't include load tracking. So that's a big thing that you want to be aware of. If you really want to track your training and your fitness and your development, you want to see the impact that a training session has on your body or an evaluation or an estimation of the impact it has on your body, and you want to track that over time to see if you're pushing yourself as hard as you maybe should be, then you have to look at the Gar Garmin Forerunner series, 245 or better, and the Phoenix 6 series, because it's not included in the rest of the Garmin lineup. They do not have the in-depth workout analytics. With Polar, it's actually missing on the Polar Unite, the smallest and cheapest Polar, but it's available in the Polar Ignite and up, the Vantage V, the Vantage M, the Grit X, and the Vantage V2. So all of those have the Training Load Pro. So that's where it's available. Chorus has a Training Load tracking, but it's it's not very effective. It just sort of goes up to show you worked out and it goes down the, the day after you worked out. So it's not very helpful there. Sunto as well has the beginnings of it, but they don't really, um, they, they haven't contracted with First Beat to use that part, portion of the First Beat analytics. So Sunto's tracking is just sort of volume tracking, like how much time did you work out, but that's not helpful for anyone. Let's take a look at how each of them show information over time and the stats that flow in together and how it can be worthwhile to pull some of that data out. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more and let's get into okay, it. Okay, so this is the main Garmin landing page and we're gonna dive into something really quickly about uh, load tracking and exercise intensity tracking and how it relates to training status. So you'll see at the top here, you know, at the very top where above the body battery, you should see the training status. The requirement for having training status to appear is you have to go on at least two runs and it's really only five minutes in length using the running profile. So tracking GPS coupled with your heart rate and if you do that, so the other place you can find it is under the performance tab at the bottom, you go into training status at the top, and this is where it would appear. Now, what it's gonna say is it's gonna say no status. So this is where this basic information would flow through to the main landing page of the Garmin Connect app if you had been doing running consistently. And I just realized I have not run in the last week, so it did not continue to populate, but we're gonna move on past that. So it tracks your load status by device. So depending on what device you use, it'll track the load status. Unfortunately, it doesn't sort of track for all devices all at once. So you'll go into the load, and this is what you get with the 745, 945 on the Forerunner side and the Phoenix 6 series is you get a lot of specificity. So first is the load focus. And this would be helpful if you were, you know, probably running or biking or doing something specific, specific to training. But for us in CrossFit high intensity interval training, we're just gonna pump out a lot of highly aerobic activities. So the highly aerobic you can see in the middle and the amount of time spent in anaerobic and amount of time spent in lowly aerobic is there. And you know the goal is to try to fall within those dotted lines. But this is where one aspect of the load tracking could be specific if you were you know, probably running or had a running program that you were following, but it's not as useful for CrossFit training. The second tab over is the exercise load where you can see over time how much intensity, what the literal 
load volume was. And you can see within all of these, a load score for each of the workouts. And that amasses in your seven day totals. So you can hold your finger over bits and it'll tell you your mass, you know, how much you've amassed in different load tidbits over time. And then based on your fitness level, the green bars is what you want to stay in. So I didn't work out today using a Garmin watch. Unfortunately, I'm in the middle of changing from the Phoenix 6 to the 6X to do some testing there. So I didn't track a workout for today. So you can see that my load dropped off into the bottom of the optimal zone. So if I had a status, it would be probably saying I'm detraining because I'm trending downwards, even though today I did have a harder workout. So this is what the total of the load tracking looks like on the Garmin app. So this is the most important. And that 719 optimal score is where you can sort of start to see if you're falling within the green lines based on your fitness level. I, you know, for CrossFit and High Intensity Interval, I don't tend to use these two pieces, but that main piece. And then I do often use the training status, but fail to record a five minute run um, using the running profile. So my status is no status, but it will tell you if you're over training, under training, if you're maintaining, um, and it gives really good information there if it was populating. And all this sort of coincides with, you know, the workouts that you've done. So this is how it amasses, you know, those calculations. So you go into the specific stats for a workout and this training effect, 3.7 and 3.0 and the aerobic and anaerobic and the amount of time spent in the intensity zones will correlate to a number. So you don't, unfortunately on the workouts themselves, you don't see that number in the workout, but this is how it evaluates the intensity of your workout is that training effect and that's the 118 CrossFit. So if we go back into performance and we look back, give it a second to find me, we go back into load, you can see on 118, the load was 241. So it was, you know, a heavy duty load. Usually you can see in the hundreds, 185, 182. So that was a harder workout. Um, and so it amassed a higher load score um, based on the load tracking. So then we go into polars. And polars you find in the bottom, you know, in this fourth tab over on the bottom, and you can rearrange where the, all the tabs, you know, fall. And right in the middle is your tracking over time. So we'll start with a, looking at a session. So this was a session from today using a chest strap off Polar Beat, and there's a specific uh, video about how you can get the recovery time. But this is what you would get if you were just using a Polar Watch and um, tracking it to Polar Flow. So you see the training zones, but here in the middle, that load score, 112, is what's gonna flow through to my load tracking. So that's the intensity or the exertion evaluation, like how hard I pushed myself in this particular workout gave me a score of 112. And then that flows into an assessment of how productive. So you click on the cardio load tab and you can see your load over time. And the way it calculates it is easier to understand with Polar than it is with Garmin because Garmin doesn't tell you how it's calculating it. But you can always see your strain number, which is your average load over the last seven days. So that cardio load score averaged out across seven days. So however many days you worked out and then divided by seven. And then the tolerance score is your average load per day over the last 28 days. And so, you know, intuitively you can see that if your strain over the last seven days that number 61 in the middle, over your tolerance over the last 28 days, that number 59, if the strain is higher than the tolerance, then in the last seven days, you've pushed yourself on average more than you did in the last four weeks. And that gives you a productive. So you see in the middle of the page, the productive that sort of shows you, and there's times where it will show you, you know, here in the middle where I was overtraining my my strain had gotten considerably too high than my tolerance. So my average was below the intensity that I had taken on that particular week. And then the other thing is you see the little arrows towards the upper right. When you click that, it shows you a big, beautiful graph. And this is one of the things. So there's two things I like a lot about the Polar. Well, three things. With Garmin, it's harder to get to the data and the information. Plus, you have to do that stupid five minute run using the run profile in order to get your training status to appear. But here in Polar, A, it's you know easier to find. B, it's a simple simple metric where you have your how hard you pushed yourself this week versus how hard you pushed yourself the last 28 days or four weeks. But then it, it puts it in this big, beautiful graph. And this is using a bunch of different watches. So 
Garmin is sort of limiting the load tracking per watch. Now some of the same stats will flow through to um, device to device with Physio TrueUp, but you won't get the same graph unless you're using the same watch. But this is using a multiple of different watches and you can see how the blue line, it's just easy visually to understand. The blue line is your fitness level and the purple line is how hard you've you're bringing up the fitness level by the amount of exertion in the last seven days versus the last 28. So with that, that is the summary of how they're displayed, how they're calculated, and how they're useful for training and training over time. Let's come back. Okay, so looking at the basic stats you get on both platforms, Garmin gives you the training effect, anaerobic, anaerobic, and if you have a 745, 945, and Phoenix 6, you'll get training details, sort of like specificity, what type of load you just placed on yourself. But it all sort of culminates into your load tracking over time. But I do like that the primary starting evaluation for the workout exertion level gives you a basic score zero to five for the training effect aerobic and anaerobic, and it breaks it down in useful information. Then you have polar system. So polar will give you the cardio load. It's just one score for how much exertion or how much impact it had on your body physically. And they'll take that one score and they'll tabulate it over a certain period of time and compare it to a longer period of time. And that will show whether you're pushing yourself more than you more, pushing yourself recently more than you have over a longer period of time to see if your fitness is improving. So looking at the two separately, the Garmin, I feel like, has specificity and detail, maybe, and I would say more than we would probably need in the CrossFit training and high-intensity interval training community, because a lot of us aren't doing lowly aerobic things. We're doing a mixture of aerobic and anaerobic, and we don't need all the training load detail. And, but the green graph and the white lines to show you're pushing yourself in the same sort of right trajectory, I feel like is useful information. So I feel like it is useful information. But the problem on the Garmin side is it's buried. It's buried a few screens in, a few taps in, to be able to get your training status, which on your watch would say you're improving, you know, you're improving, you're productive, you're maintaining, you're underproductive, you're, you know, resting, whatever it is. To get that training status, you have to go on a half a mile run, or I'm sorry, like a five minute run once or twice a week using the GPS, using the run profile so that they can pull an updated VO2 max score because that's what populates the training status. Now it's based on, it makes sense. They need to know where your VO2 max level is right now so they can tell you if you're training too hard or too lightly, but Polar's just happens all the time. You don't need any information other than your seven day history and your 28 day history. So what Polar does, it takes just the last seven days and that's your strain score for how hard you're pushing it right now. And then it takes the 28 day average, on average, how hard did you push it all across that time and says, okay, well, how hard you're pushing it right now? Is it more or less than what you've been doing over a long period of time? And that makes sense. That actually has sort of simplicity to it. So I don't know if the scores are better or worse, but the simplicity of Polar's makes it preferable to just basic tracking and you don't have to go on a five minute run once or twice a week using GPS in the running uh, profile. So that's the basic breakdown between the two. We've seen it. We've talked about it. We talked about what goes into it. So if you have comments, if you have likes and dislikes about the training load programs of different watches with these two platforms and other watches, let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching.